What's going on, MMA fans? I'm back to do my MMA Corner number 10 video. I'm at the end of this. I have something to show everyone. Probably going to make everyone drop their jaw. Um, maybe not so much, but I'll talk about this specific thing that I just got in the mail and the crap that I had to go through. But nonetheless, let's get into some topics that were sent to me. Four topics. I'm going to go into them as best as I can. Um, first topic was from uh, Natron212. Let me talk about who could beat BJ Penn. Um, Really, there's four guys that stand out to me right now that are guys that could do it. A lot of people talked about Sean Shirk. I know that I had mentioned that I thought Sean Shirk was a bad matchup for BJ Penn because it, you know, later in the rounds he could give BJ a problem as far as cardio. But BJ has shown that he's taking fighting seriously, and that's why he's a dangerous guy and why he's one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. Guys that could beat him, a guy like a Michihiro Ishida, um, a guy that's a um, an energizer version of Sean Shirk, I think. Um, Shinya Aoki, a better grappler. Tatsuo Kawajiri, great wrestler, great hands. And a rematch between, and, and this is a heated debate a lot with a lot of people, uh, Takanori Gomi and BJ Penn from Rumble on the Rock. Um, really, that fight, Gomi was so young in his career, um, and Gomi was not the Gomi that we that we see today. Gomi put on a lot more weight, too, as well, and beefed up compared to that fight. Look at Gomi at Rumble on the Rock, and look at Gomi and Pride. I mean, two totally do different looking guys. Um, that fight would totally be different. Both guys are different fighters at this point in their careers. Um, that's really, I think, the best matchup because a guy that can just take it to BJ Penn and strike with him um, and a guy that's not going to be trying to push BJ to the mat, stand with him and bang with him and, and push BJ to the brink. But who could win that fight? That's left up to interpretation. But I think those are the four best guys that could really give BJ fits. Thanks for the topic. Um, next topic was from B Fett Forever. Um, let me talk about Tiago Silva and Leota Machida. And do these guys deserve a title shot if either one wins? Um, Tiago Silva coming off of wins over Antonio Mendez, um, Houston Alexander, Tomas Drawl, and James Irvin, of course, via the, um, the injury. But um, you got Machida coming off of wins over Sokaju, Ortiz, Heath, Nakamura, Sam Hoger, and of course, beating BJ Penn and Rich Franklin in the past. Uh, Machida's constantly proved himself in the UFC. He's fought top competition. Unfortunately, he's probably going to have to have the Fitch syndrome, win a bunch of fights, and then get a title shot because he's not marketable. Um, Silva still needs a couple fights. Um, he is a dangerous guy, but you know he's only got you know two really strong wins that I can see. Mendez was a tough fight for him. He almost got hurt in that fight. The f other fight where it was just back and forth really was against Tomas Draw. So it was really two top fights. Otherwise, Alexander was a quick fight, and Irvin was a quick fight. So you really didn't get to see Silva tested. And I think that's where you need to see a couple more fights for him. Um, Machida, I think, has already proved himself, but probably is going to need a couple more fights as well. Um, but, you know, whoever wins this fight, if Machida wins, he should already, you know, have had a title shot. But this would further cement that fact. Uh, thanks for the topic. Um, the next topic was from El Re Carino. Let me talk about the 155 division and just how much of a turmoil it is in. And... Uh, Right now, the top of the heap is BJ Penn. Below him is Roger Huerta, Kenny Florian. Looking down at the rest of the division is um, really the next guy in line is Tyson Griffin. Um, then you could really make the argument that Rich Clemente's there. Um, you got Sean Shirk that with a couple wins could be right back in the mix. Um, that division is really just in a big, big turmoil. Um, and unfortunately, uh, you got guys that are older that are going to be probably making their way back down, like Aurelio. Um, it just it doesn't do well at 155, just too much of a weight cut. So we'll see how that division plays out. Right now, I don't see anyone, like I said it with ne uh, Natron's uh, topic, I don't see anyone beating BJ at this point in the UFC. Um, thanks for the topic. Uh, the next topic was from Spider Silva 07. Wanted me to talk about what really makes a fight truly special. Uh, we got to see, of course, Forrest Griffin, Rampage Jackson, great fight. Back and forth action uh, was talked about, controversial. It's a fight that fans wanted to see. Fights like um, Takanori Gomi, Tatsuo Kawajiri from Bushido 9, um, Hughes Pen 2, another great fight that a lot of fans talked about. But what really makes a fight special to me, and I'm, I'm sure to most MMA fans, is guys coming back from the brink of defeat and just pouring it on, and it, it happening several times in the fight. Both guys going back and forth action, like the the Alvarez um, uh, Kawajiri fight from Dream, on uh, the last Dream event. Um, ground scrambles, back and forth action, you know, submission attempts. 
a fight that was really truly special and had everything that you wanted in a fight as far as a great ground scramble, great stand-up, everything would be Tyson Griffin, Frankie Edgar. That was a great fight. Um, you could go back to, um, you know, Chris Hordesky and Ryan Schultz, a previous fight you know, in the IFL. It was a great fight. A lot of people talked about that, you know, their uh, fight being a uh, fight of the year candidate, their earlier fight. Um, you know, there's, there's several fights that you could really put up there saying that, you know, that is the best example of what truly makes a fight special. And really, the one that comes to my mind, if you haven't seen it, is Takanori Gomi and Tetsuo Kawajiri from Bushido 9. Great, great fight. So, as always, um, leave me some comments, constructive, negative, positive, um, some ideas for my next MMA Corner video. I'm actually caught up. Real quick, this came in today. I was excited. It was like freaking crap fest trying to get a hold of this thing because it is back ordered everywhere everywhere but best buy finally sent it to me and here it is folks pride 33 one of the best events ever pick this event up you had a solid card top to bottom nick diaz beating gomi dan henderson beating vanderlei you had soka juju jungle punching little nog um Great fight top to bottom. So check this card out. Awesome card. I'm glad that I finally got this title. And uh, on that note, you guys, have a great day.